What's going on YouTube? This is how I built my very mini, but nonetheless, 3D print farm. I'm gonna give you a tour of the space, show you what everything looks like and what the plans are moving forward. So let's go ahead and hop into the video. All right, so let's actually start over where the 3D printers are because that's a probably a good spot to start. So I'm gonna start at the top and make my way down. So actually just a couple of days ago, I installed these uh, filament racks. I actually, actually, maybe I should start here. So this is the room that we print in. So that's the living room over there, my office over there, bunch of lights. Uh, so this is when you first walk into our home, it's actually right off to the right. We recently uh, transformed this into the 3D printing area because this was a whole lot of nothing for a while. So we were like, hey, we're starting this. I was gonna put it downstairs in the, the shop downstairs, but uh, the shop does not have, it's not temperature controlled. So I was like, I need to bring this upstairs. So we decided that this is probably a good area. So the reason I wanted to start here is uh, I didn't want to do anything too permanent. So I didn't want to build like shelves that were, you know, going to be drilled into the wall. So this is really the only thing that we drilled into the wall and that we probably plan on drilling into the wall because eventually we are going to move out of this spot. But uh, so I started with these filament racks. So I obviously have some more filament on order and kind of expanding out a little bit sooner. This is what I have stored right now, but I actually have some more uh, coming up for another video. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're not to make sure you catch that video. I was uh, talking in a couple of videos about, you know, wanting to get to 10,000 subscribers. I was talking with my buddy. We're actually trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below, uh, especially if you get any value out of this video. But uh, so we started with these uh, 3D printing or 3D printed filament rack holders. And then I just got these one inch dowels from Lowe's, I believe. They were like $4 or it's Home Depot, they're like $4. And then it didn't take, uh, cost that much for the, uh, the filament. I screwed each one of these into a stud, probably a little bit of overkill. I probably didn't necessarily need to have all of them into studs, but this stuff can kind of get heavy, especially when they're you know full rolls. So I decided it might not be a bad idea to uh, put them in the stud. So that's my storage for filament. And then all of the unopened boxes, uh, I have some unopened boxes up top here, but uh, all the unopened filament's gonna be stored down here right down here um this is just a this is actually a, just a power supply but this is my un or my ups so i have that plugged in down there and then i got this uh stand from home depot as well i'll try and link everything down below that i can uh this was from home depot or lowe's i believe lowe's on clearance it was supposed to be like 170 dollars. i got it for like 90 bucks so i was like yeah i can't beat that uh this space is down this way for a reason because uh, i'm going to be ordering another bamboo lab a1 so it's going to go right here and then when we expand to another one it's going to go on this side here so that's kind of why i have it built this way once we get past four printers, I'm probably gonna move out of this space, but for now, that's how we have that set up. So that's why it's such a big gap at the bottom. So uh, moving on to the printers themselves. So I do have a Bamboo Lab P1S with the AMS light or the AMS up top and uh, absolutely fantastic printers. Had some issues with bed adhesion, but it wasn't the uh, printer's fault. It was I actually realized what it was. We were by we, I mean somebody in my family was touching the uh, build plate every time we were taking it off. So that was one of the uh, one of the issues that I had, but I got it fixed. I put a little bit of a uh, glue, a little bit of uh, like Elmer's glue down on the bed and it has fixed every single one of my uh, issues that I was having. All of it was bed adhesion. So uh, get yourself a little glue stick, it goes a long way. Uh, I guess we could start, we can, step over here to have a little gridfinity system going on over here for my ikea alex drawer as well that's getting built out uh, fully as well not not done yet but so that's the p1s moving over here we have the a1 this is probably my favorite printer out of the two let me know if you guys want me to do a review on both of these or a comparison but we decided uh when building out the print farm to go with the a1 instead of the p1s's not 
really for any reason other than I know uh, this is super reliable. I can print. I have not had one issue with this printer. And again, even the issues that I had with this printer wasn't the printer's fault. It was kind of our fault or my fault, I should say. So I'm good. But either way, for the price, I'm going to be going with a bunch of A1s and then I'm storing them down here. Uh, one of the upgrades we did to it was actually adding the AMS uh, light mounting system, the top mount. So you have to print that top portion right there, but you also have to print these back pieces here. Absolutely a game changer. Gives me way more area to work on here. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take stuff off the printer. Uh, this is obviously the waste bin. I'll take stuff off the printer and put them here and like grab off all of the, uh, you know, uh, tree supports, throw them right in that bucket. And then from there, I actually bring them right over to this section here. So I have some packing supplies down below. But this was actually the desk that we were using before for the printers, and it was just way too wobbly. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, let me see if I can't get it to wobble. There you go. It was super wobbly, so that's when it was time to upgrade. There's Kobe and Kona somewhere over there. Uh, so it was uh, time to kind of upgrade. So, But right here is where we do a lot of the, like the photography, the um, all the... Uh, products normally go right in here. We have a bunch of different, uh, that's the phone I use to take that, or to take pictures with it, but we have a bunch of different backgrounds. And then we put the, there's a little light in here. So I have a little soft box. So I'll put them in here, take pictures of everything. I have some props. So like I'm making some of these planters. So I have, this goes, goes in there. So that's kind of why this looks like a mess, but, um, these have been going crazy on the Etsy store. I don't know if you guys have watched that video, but definitely check that video out about, you know, my first week on Etsy. This is the next product that we're uh, developing. I had uh, bought this file from uh, a maker online and there are some things that we're doing to tweak it um, and make it a little bit more functional and a little bit more personal. So I'll probably do a video on that. Not 100% sure yet, but um, this is a book holder. So you just put your book on there. It's also a tablet holder and then a spot for your coffee. But yeah, so this is kind of where we do the product photography and videos as well as, um, you know, kind of store some of the products that we're either going to be taking photos of or not sure what we're doing yet. So moving over here, this is kind of the packing and shipping station. So just a wine cart that again was in here, had no use. So on the left, we have some boxes down in there. We have some stickers and random things. We have some products that we uh, have up on our Etsy store kind of stored in here. And we have just some shipping supplies there. Not going to show any order information uh, and then some more uh, shipping supply stuff in here. So that's kind of what this area is for. So this is the area when you come in off to the left, uh, you have that. So printers over there and then shipping station over here. So coming over here, this is a random drawer just full of random stuff. A lot of uh, the stuff that I get from printers. Eventually, I'm going to be moving this stuff over into uh, the Gridfinity system and actually going to be outfitting all of these with Gridfinity systems as well. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I'm not sure what I'm using this stuff for. Also down in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. If you guys think I like what, how do you think I should make this flow? So right now, when I have something come off the print bed, I bring them right to the station, take off any of the um, little weird Philly thing, or sorry, the, uh, uh, I'm blanking out. Here we go. I take off any of the tree supports. There we go. Words are hard. I bring them over here, figure out if we're going to be taking photos of them and what we're going to be doing. And then I move them over here for storage. And then for storage, we go right up to pack them on that table. This doesn't really get used. So let me know in the comments what you guys think we should be using this station for. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn the camera around. One other thing I didn't show uh, is these little blink cameras i guess that's the last little upgrade that i did to this and i don't know why i didn't talk about it earlier but so we did the uh poop collector the little deflector and then i also bought just yesterday actually that's probably why i forgot to talk about it i bought these little camera mounts for or i bought the cameras from blink the little minis and i 3d printed this so i can actually see what's going on because as if you're a bamboo lab owner you know that the cameras 
are great. It's great that they have a camera, but it's more so just to see what your print looks like. It's kind of hard to catch any detail. So I mounted this one on here, and this one is actually just sitting on the glass looking down. Uh, so yeah, those are kind of some of the upgrades that I did for my printers as well. I definitely plan on doing a full video on all of that, but I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love and support you have been showing on all of my videos. This is what it looks like. So a lot of this is just documentation for me. So as the 3D printing business starts to grow, as the YouTube channel grows, I want to just make sure that I have this documented for, you know, my first two printers, what that looked like or what that looks like. And then moving forward, what everything is going to look like. So I appreciate you guys for watching it this far. If you've watched this far and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down below. It means the world to me. I have a goal of 100,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of 2025, and uh, I can only get there with your guys' support. So uh, we are going to be giving or doing like giveaways probably at each milestone. So like 15 or 10,000, 25,000, 50,000, and then 100,000. Uh, we're going to try and do some giveaways for you guys just for all the support. Uh, if you guys want to buy any of these things, I'll have most of the stuff linked down below. Uh, some of it's affiliate link that helps the channel. Some of it's not. Uh, either way, I just want to give you guys as much value as I can. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.